Oke, okay, Kak. Mohon uh, menunggu sejenak uh, Dr. Muntaha dan Dr. Haslina karena kami sedang menunggu para peserta masuk. Oke, okay, insya Allah. Oke, okay. while we are waiting for the participants to join the Zoom, it will take 10 minutes, so please feel Please make sure that you mute your microphone so there will be no noises during this webinar. Thank you. Her Excellency, Yudi Pudidin of International Islamic University, Malaysia, Associate Professor Dr. Hasina Binti Ibrahim, the Honorable Dr. Muntaha bin Artalim Zain, the Honorable the President of International Islam, I'm sorry, the President of Indonesian Student Association in Egypt, Mr. Rauzina Azmal Umar Lisens, the Honorable All Staff of First Department Indonesian Student Association in Egypt, and respectable all participants of this seminar. First of all, let's thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because, yeah, because of his blessing, we are able to attend this event. Secondly, may peace and salutation always be given to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who has guided us from the darkness to the brightness era. I'm Sunny Fadila, your master of ceremony today. Welcome to this webinar. This event is proudly presented by First Department of Indonesian Student Association in Egypt. We would thank everyone here for taking time to attend this webinar. Okay, so many students want to continue their postgraduate studies outside Egypt, then International Islamic University Malaysia can be an option. To start our opening ceremony today, allow me to read today's agenda. The first is opening by reciting al -Fatihah. The second is the welcoming speech from President of Indonesian Student Association in Egypt, Mr. Rauzin Azmal Umur Lisens. The third is the welcoming speech from representative of Indonesian student of First Department of Indonesian Student Association in Egypt. The fourth is keynote speech from Dr. Haslina. The fifth is question and answer session. The sixth is turnover of certificate or certificate presentation and will be followed by praying together at the last program. Okay, that's our agenda, agenda which will be presented soon. Dear audiences, Let's open this agenda by reciting Al Fatiha. Thank you very much. Moving on to the second agenda, which, which was welcoming speech by President of Indonesia. Okay. Moving on to the second agenda, which was welcoming speech from representative of First Department in Indonesian Student Association to Mr. Hamza, the virtual floor is yours. Thank you, uh, the Master of Ceremony, Mrs. Sani Fadila Nur Aisha, for giving me time to give a welcoming speech in this webinar. 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, suara saya terdengar. My sound is clear. Terdengar. Oke, okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Excellency, uh, Dr. Haslina Ibrahim, the DVD Dean of Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman Kuliah of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences, Islamic uh, International Islamic University Malaysia, Malaysia, and Dr. Muntaha Artalim. From Association Professor uh, Dr. Haslina Ibrahim, the DVD Dean of Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman Kuliah of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences, International Islamic University of Malaysia. Honorable uh, Mr. President of Indonesian Student Association in Egypt, Auzian Azmal Umur, HA, and Chairwoman of Wihdah of Indonesian Student Association in Egypt, Huna Hayoroshida. Respectable, all of Chairman of Student Senates, and unforgettable, the whole committee and participants in this Zoom meeting. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawalah wa la hawla quwata illa billah. Rabbi ashraqali sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli amma ba'du. Alhamdulillah, first of all, let us let us say thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Uh, the one who has been giving us chance to meet in this beautiful Monday. Salawat and salam, as well praise it to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the last Prophet who has brought us from the darkness to the lightness with his glorious religion, Islam. Uh, I would like to say thank for our MC today, uh, Mrs. Sani because she gave me a section to give this uh, welcoming or opening speech. Uh, honestly, this is my first opening speech. Uh, I give uh, using English language in this formal or official event. I give opening speech with Arabic or Indonesian language often, informal or informal event. Therefore, this welcoming speech or this opening speech will be my precious experience in my uh, career or my life. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Hamza Asad, uh, first graduate of Faculty of Usuluddin al Azhar University, majoring theology and uh, philosophy. Uh, I am also first coordinating minister in Indonesian Student Association in Egypt, uh, taking care about Uh, educational growth and progress. I am accordingly grateful to be able to organize this special event, namely international webinar, postgraduate program in International Islamic University, Malaysia. This event is held and organized by Indonesian Student Association in Egypt, collaborating in collaborating with International Islamic University of Malaysia, as known as IIUM. And our speaker today is, uh, inshallah, uh, Professor Dr. Haslina Ibrahim and Dr. Muntaha Artalim. From association, uh, Professor Dr. Haslina Ibrahim, the DVD Dean of Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, Kuliah of Islamic Refilled Knowledge and Human Sciences. International Islamic University of uh, International Islamic University Malaysia IIUM. Uh, this is the first event held by us, uh, Ministry of Education in Indonesian Student Association in Egypt, internationally in this academic year. The goal of uh, our event today is going to give an overview of postgraduate program in International Islamic University, Malaysia, with the following theme, tema, yani, postgraduate program in International Islamic University, Malaysia, Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, Kuleya of Islamic Refilled Knowledge and Human Sciences, or in Arabic language is, Ad-Dirasatul Uliya Fil Jami'atil Islamiyatil Alamiyah Malaysia, Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, 
kulliyatul ulum syar'iyah wal ulumil insaniyah. And fil uh, khitam uh, from my deepest heart I hope this event can provide useful insights and benefits for all participants as it should. I re represent Indonesian Student Association in Egypt and the entire committee kindly apologize if there are errors or inconveniences in organizing this event. Thank you for all the attention. Enjoy the event. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much to Mr. Hamza for a beautiful speech. Okay. Dear audience, dear audiences, ladies and gentlemen, as we have finished our opening session, to lead next session, I would like to invite Ayosha to moderate the webinar today. Sir. Okay, thank you so much, dear the Master of Ceremony, for allowing me to guide the following agenda to the end, inshallah. First of all, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ayel Shailfina. I am now the student of Al-Azhar University, majoring on Sharia Islamia or Islamic Jurisprudence. And I will be your moderator for the next 60 minutes, inshallah. So before getting started to the main agenda, I'd like to greet our speaker today and Dr. Haslina and Dr. Muntaha. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Fine. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Dr. Haslina, how are you, doctor? Alhamdulillah. This is such an honor for all of us, and we are so pleased to have you with us today to share some information and insights about IIUM, which stands for International Islamic University, Malaysia. So, dear all the audiences, the International Islamic University of Malaysia is one of the top public universities in Kuala Lumpur. IIUM is considered one of the top five Islamic universities of the world. And also, excuse me. And also is recognized as the premier international Islamic research university by the Islamic Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. In addition, it is one of the best public universities in Malaysia with a specific mission of integration, Islamization, internationalization, and comprehensive excellence. And our speaker today, Associate Professor Dr. Haslina, is the Deputy Dean of the Kulia Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman International Islamic University, Malaysia. This is really such an honor to have you as our speaker today, Dr. Haslina. Thank you so much for making up with us. And after informing a bit about IIUM, I'd like to ask for permission to Honorable Dr. Haslina Ibrahim to read the short biography of yours, inshallah. So, Dr. Haslina, which is now, who is now with us today, is, uh, excuse me, dear, the operator, please have the screen shared. So Haslina binti Ibrahim or Associate Professor Dr. Haslina binti Ibrahim is the Associate Professor in IIUM Gomba Campus, Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, Kulia of Islam Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. Others position, Deputy Dean Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. Academic qualification, Bachelor of Usuluddin, Bachelor degree University Malaysia, excuse me, University Malaya or UM, and then Master of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Heritage Master's degree International Islamic University Malaysia, and next PhD in, in Usuluddin and Comparative Religion, Doctor of Philosophy International Islamic University Malaysia. Expert profile. 
Dr. Hasina Ibrahim is serving as an associate professor at the Department of Usuluddin and Comparative Religion of the International Islamic University, Malaysia. She has been serving the department since 2003. Her research areas of interest are religious studies, interreligious relationship, and Islamic Dawah. She has held various administrative positions and currently holding the post as the Deputy Dean Postgraduate and Responsible Research at the Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. Her publications include Exploring Religious Pluralism, Christian and Muslim Response, and Kalam and its re relevance in Muslim scholarship of religion, an integrated approach. She is currently working on a manuscript titled A Muslim Guide to Understand Sacred Texts of Religions, a Comparative Approach. She holds a, med a mediation certificate by the Court Group Australia and is currently involved in coaching grassroots leaders' meditation basic skills. So that is uh, the short biography from Dr. Haslina Ibrahim. And before coming to the main agenda, and now that is uh, the for the sort of information that we know about our speaker today, which is really the best match that we could find, and we hope that we could take as much advantages as we can from the information and the material of the presentation today. So coming to the next main agenda, which is the presentation, we would like to invite Professor Associate Do Professor Dr. Haslina Ibrahim to present the presentation. The virtual floor is yours. Thank you so much. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah. Uh, let me do the salutation first. Yeah? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Miss MC, Sister Alish, uh, Aisha or Alisha. Yeah. Uh, Thank you very much for your uh, nice introduction of me. Yeah, I am. Uh, uh, I'm nobody. Yeah, but uh, inshallah, I'll do my very best to introduce the program in IIM. I would like also to say thank you to um, Sister Sunny Fadila. Yeah, for emceeing the session. Uh, Brother Hamza. Yeah, the president of. Indonesian Student Association in Egypt, yeah, and not to forget uh, Associate Professor Dr. Muntaha for uh, becoming the uh, mod, uh, the mediator, uh, the person who approached me and introduced me to the uh, Indonesia Indonesian Student Association. Thank you very much for your invitation into this uh, program. I would like to congratulate the Indonesian Student Association for your um, effort in reaching out to uh, IIUM or specifically to AHAS KIRKHS. I would say that uh, this is for the first time that we receive an invitation from uh, International Student Association uh, and I am very much um, uh, blessed and uh, thankful for your interest in IIUM. Yeah? Alhamdulillah, um, since uh, next year we are going to celebrate our 40th uh, anniversary. Alhamdulillah, it was a tough years, at least, um, well, especially lately because you know of the uh, economic uh, situation is not good uh, in, in Malaysia we until today we are facing uh, many challenges but alhamdulillah we have a very dedicated lecturers um, academics and also administrators uh, who share together the vision and mission of the university and the kulia yeah. i would like to say congratulations to all of you for your interest in 
uh, pursuing your postgraduate study, uh, your third year, uh, the third year education in Malaysia. And inshallah, um, I will share with you what we have over here. And uh, hopefully, um, my explanation can give you better ideas about what we have in IIUM. Uh, and uh, I welcome any suggestions uh, if you uh, think that they are, you know, uh, still uh, improvements or additional uh, value that we need to add to our existing program. Inshallah, during the Q&A session, yeah, you are welcome to share your opinion. So I am using the slides that I uh, gave during the uh, Ta'aruk briefing uh, recently. So this is my latest slides and I have uh, added few informations on the slides. So basically, these are our team. Our Kula is very big. Yeah? We have 11 departments uh, plus four, uh, dean and three deputy deans. Yeah? And also a deputy director who is managing the administrative staffs at the Kulia. So our Kulia is Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. Uh, the Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman is the forerunner or our father yeah, who named the Kulia. Uh, Kulia of Islamic Reveal Knowledge and Human Sciences. Uh, he passed away last year and uh, in commemoration of his contributions to the establishment of this kulia, we have named this kulia uh, after his name. Yeah, so we have a very long name. Yeah, but never mind. Yeah, as long as we are able to uh, recognize the uh, responsible person who have contributed a lot to the establishment, the vision and mission of this kulia. So the dean of this school is Professor Dr. Shukran Abdul Rahman. He's a psychologist yeah, from the Department of Psychology. Myself uh, from the Department of Usuluddin and Comparative Religion, Brother Hamza. Yeah. And we have also uh, Associate Professor Datin Dr. Aini Maznina. She is looking into the curriculum for undergraduate. Yeah. I look at the postgraduate and Dr. Aini Mazna is look, uh, look into the undergraduate. And we have also uh, an associate professor, uh, Dr. Muhammad Noor Abdul Jalil. Uh, he is in charge of the undergraduate students' activities, yeah, uh, co-curricular activities. And then uh, the rest of them, uh, you can see on slides here, are the heads of departments and coordinators. Yeah. All right. Um, let me introduce the kulia before I, uh, you know, proceed with the structure, the uh, curriculum, the study plan at the kulia. Um, one thing that is unique about our kulia, if you notice that, uh, you know, our kulia is named uh, as kulia of revealed knowledge. Eh? Kulia il ilm al wahyu, eh? brother Hamza, not Aimish. Not, I think you said, alum uh, syar'iyah. So, ilm al-wahyu, Dr. Muntaha. Ilm al-wahyu. So, this is uh, more generic than alum al-syar'iyah. Ilm al-wahyu wa al-ulum al-insaniyah. And human sciences. Yeah? Human sciences, not social sciences. Human sciences. So, we uh, want to integrate. Uh, we want to integrate al-wahyu wa we want to integrate Islamic revealed knowledge yeah, and human sciences. What do I mean by integration here? We hope that our graduates will be, uh, graduates from revealed knowledge, for example, will be able to understand the basics of human sciences and vice versa. Yeah. So it is our aspiration that if you come to IIUM and you do your postgraduate studies here, you are able to, um, you know, uh, to do research that may have the elements of human sciences, at least in terms of the methodology, for example. Uh, if not on the subject matter specialization, but in terms of the methodology uh, of research. Yeah. Uh, we also appreciate so those who say, for example, even though I know that in Al Azhar you are doing Islamic studies, eh, Sharia, or maybe Arabic uh, language studies, or Qiraat, eh, 
uh, may you may you are also welcome to do your postgraduate studies in human sciences but of course there are requirements eh? you have to fulfill certain requirements before you can do your second degree in say for example history or social sciences or uh, psychology or communication so there are certain requirements before you can pursue your master's or phd in these uh, specializations given that your first degree is in islamic studies but we encourage you to do your uh, second degree also in the human sciences because we would like uh, our students to do research uh, to do Islamization, yeah, to adopt Islamization of the human sciences. What do I what do I mean by Islamization of human sciences? As you know that uh, uh, human sciences that we have today, yeah are the product of Western uh, discourse, you know, Western sciences. So they have, uh, they come from certain uh, background of epistemology, yeah, of sources of knowledge, of objectives of knowledge, yeah, uh, and orientation of, uh, of knowledge. Yeah. But in IIUM, we want to understand human sciences from the Islamic point of view. We want to instill the the Islamic epistemology in understanding human or in understanding uh, society, in understanding psychology, in understanding communication, for example. So we want to inject or instill the elements of Islam into the study of human sciences. We have also a very interesting um, um, objective in combining between the two divisions. So over here, we call it divisions. Uh -huh. Divisions of revealed knowledge and division of human sciences, uh, we, we call as relevantization. This term is coined by our uh, respected uh, professor emeritus, yeah, Tan Sri Dr. Muhammad Kamal Hassan. Yeah, relevantization. Dr. Muntaha, perhaps you can help me later on what relevantization in Arabic is. Yeah, so our audience will be able to appreciate. Uh, what relevantization is and perhaps adopt it in their study. I know that most of you are studying Turas, yeah, the heritage uh, of Islam. So uh, what we aspire uh, students of revealed knowledge is to relevantize, to make their study of the heritage of Islam, of the Turas. Uh, how do we understand the Turas in the context of today? You know, some of you are from Usuluddin. You may have studied the Mutazilites, the Asharites, the Hanabilites, yeah, and you know all this al -Firaq. And you may have studied the the, the thinking of Ibn Sina in philosophy, the thinking of Ibn Rush, you know, the Tahafut al falasifa for example. So we welcome that you try to understand and try to. Uh, uh, analyze all these uh, classical sources, heritages in the context of today's challenges. You know, trying to understand it from the contemporary perspectives. Yeah, now, for example, you know the Mutazilai propagate the idea of freedom of man, right? So, um, how does the concept of freedom of man of today uh, to be understood in the light of Asharites, for example, the challenges posed by the Mutazilites in the past, whether that challenges still persist today, you know, and in what manner that, you know, for example, Asharites try to reconcile or try to moderate the understanding of freedom of man uh, in light of the Quran and the Sunnah. Yeah? And also, of course, uh, when we talk about Postgraduate studies, yeah, uh, it is very essential for me to remind all of you that we expect our graduates, yeah, to do research. Yeah? When we talk about research, we also talk about innovation, but this innovation is not bidah. <laughs> I do not mean when I say innovation, innovation yeah, it is not bidah. Yeah? Innovations in the context of your research, in the sense that what are news in your research? So when you do your, uh, re uh, your dissertation, your thesis, for example, you will be asked, what is your contribution in the research area? Because we do not want you to duplicate 
or reiterate the previous research, but we want you to find something new, something new in the area of research that you are doing. So, uh, you know, we want a, a fresh idea from you. Okay, uh, therefore, in uh, IUM, we have another person who is helping the academic staff with research. Uh, she is uh, assistant professor, Dr. Ainul Azmin. So she is together with me looking into the area of research. And we hope that if our academics uh, uh, conduct good research, we will be able to bring our graduate student to be the assistant researcher or to learn the research uh, skills and techniques from their supervisors, right? So th that is, uh, you know, my responsibilities and Dr. Ainul Azmin responsibilities. So I will skip this one. Okay. So I told you just now that our Kulia compose is composed of two divisions. So we call IRK because it is too long to say Islamic reveal knowledge. Yeah? So IRK here, reveal knowledge, and there are four departments under reveal knowledge. Yeah? Uh, first, the department of Quran Sunnah studies, yeah? RTQS. And then we have the department of Fiqh and Usulul Fiqh. Yeah, RKFQ, and then the Department of Usuluddin and Comparative Religion, RKUD. You can try to search on the internet if there is any departments in this world that combines Usuluddin and Comparative Religion. You can tell me, but as far as I'm concerned, we are the only department that combine Usuluddin and Comparative Religion because you will not find any European universities, American universities, or elsewhere that combine theology and comparative religion because from the Western uh, scholarship of religion, this is impossible to combine theology and comparative religion, but in IIUM, we made it. Yeah, and then we have also another department, which is the Department of Arabic Language and Liter Literature. Yeah, and then at the department, at the Division of Human Sciences, we have another six department. Yeah, the Department of History. Yeah, the Department of uh, PSCI here referring to the political science. Yeah, and then SOCA here referring to the de Department of Sociology and Anthropology. And then DELL here, DEL refers to the Department of English Language and Literature. So we have at one part Arabic Language and Literature, another part English Language and Literature. And then we have the Department of Psychology. Yeah? PSYC is Psychology. And finally, the Department of Communication. One department is not mentioned here. It is the Department of Fundamental and Interdisciplinary Studies. So this department um, does not offer postgraduate program because it only offers uh, serving courses for undergraduate uh, students. So I don't list uh, the department here because it does not offer postgraduate program. Okay. All right. Now let's take a look at what are the programs available and what are the modes. What are the modes of program available at the departments? So of course we have a uh, masters and PhD. Yeah. Um, we have for masters we have three modes. Yeah. Uh, mixed mode, coursework, and research. Yeah. Um, except that uh, some departments do not have research mode for master's program. I think Fik also think you do not have a uh, research mode and eh, Dr. Muntaha, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, some of the departments under human sciences also, they do not have research mode for master program. What is research mode? Research mode is that when you join the program and you do not have to enroll into coursework. You do not have to um, come for courses, except for two uh, compulsory kulia courses. Lah. I will explain to you later. Uh, but, uh, and then the other two modes, uh, which are available in all departments, yeah? uh, first is mixed mode, where you take courses and you do research. Yeah? So either you you take the course, uh, the courses in semester one and semester two, or if your 
you are capable of completing the whole four courses in one semester, you will have the rest three semester to do your uh, research, yeah, to do your dissertation. Or you do by coursework alone. Okay, what does it mean? It means that you are not uh, going to write thesis. Yeah, you are going to take, if I'm not mistaken, eight to ten courses. Yeah, and then uh, in the last two semesters, you are going to write research paper. So in semester three, you are going to write one research paper. In semester four, you are going to write another research paper. So you are not writing dissertation okay now for phd we have only two modes yeah because it is impossible to have coursework mode at the level of phd writing thesis is a must at the phd level so you either you enroll for mixed mode you take four courses and then the the remaining uh, seven semesters you are going to write your thesis or you from the very beginning of the semester, you can start uh, writing uh, your proposal uh, in addition to uh, enrolling into two Kulia required courses. Okay, I've been talking about Kulia required courses just now. What are those Kulia required courses? The two required courses for all these prog uh, programs and modes are first, research methodology. Yeah, so everybody will have to take research methodology when you enroll into master and PhD program. And also you have to enroll into Islamization of knowledge courses. Now these two courses are offered in two languages, English and Arabic. If you intend to write your thesis in English, uh, I encourage you to enroll into uh, courses, uh, English courses for Islamization and uh, research methodology. Uh, and vice versa, if you are planning to write in Arabic, then you enroll into research methodology and uh, Islamization of knowledge in Arabic. Now, these two courses, uh, you uh, you are required to enroll into these courses uh, as soon as possible in the first semester. You know, the sooner the better. Yeah, because it is fully required courses. You cannot graduate if you do not enroll into these courses. Okay. So these are our coordinators. So don't worry if you come to the department since you are new to IIUM. You can link to the respective professors or assistant professors or doctors at the respective departments. They will uh, assist you, they will advise you on what to do. Yeah. So say for example, you come to the department of Fiqh and Usulul Fiqh, we have associate professor Dr. Bohida Ghalia. Yeah. If you come to Usuluddin, you have Usuluddin, who is with Usuluddin, Professor Dr. Or Mumtaz Ali. Student is not yet. Yeah. Professor Dr. Muhammad Mumtaz Ali. Yeah. And if you go to the Department of Quran Sunnah Studies, you have Dr. Amar Fatani. And you go to the Department of Arabic Language and Literature, you have Professor Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Saudiman. But I think now they have changed to Associate Professor Dr. Shamsul Jamili. Yeah. All right. So all right, how long is the program uh, in IIUM? For international student, yeah, your enrollment must be full-time. Yeah? Part-time is only meant for local students. Okay, so how long is this, uh, uh, the study uh, period? Yeah? For masters, yeah, for masters full-time, if you are hardworking, you can graduate in one year. Right, and uh, you uh, if you uh, if you uh, take up to two years, that is still within the normal duration period. Yeah, so either you finish earlier one year or you finish in two years time. We call this GOT graduate on time. If you cannot finish in two years, we have another two semesters for you to extend, yeah, extension period. 
so you can graduate uh, in three years time this is the maximum if you go beyond these three years <laughs> you have to appeal to the senate yeah you have to appeal to the senate your head of the sorry your supervisor will have to recommend for your extension uh, with good recommendations strong recommendations and your head of departments and then your paper will be presented in the kulia postgraduate uh, meeting yeah and for phd you can finish in two years time yeah or you take the normal duration three years time or the maximum duration six years sorry six academic uh, years so, this is maximum duration is six academic years means how many semesters 12 semesters Mashallah. <laughs> that is too too long yeah all right and then okay uh we have uh, i told you about the full-time uh, uh mode just now eh? so um how soon you can uh, if you are enrolling for coursework and for research yeah, how soon can you uh, defend your proposal yeah um you can actually defend your proposal in the first semester but the latest if you want to your study to be uh, properly structured yeah you have to make sure that you uh, you defend your proposal by the end of the second semester yeah so if you are able if you uh, join for password and research mix mode yeah make sure that you are able to defend your proposal in the second semester inshallah you are good if you are able to defend your proposal in the second semester uh, if you are enrolling for by research then don't worry you can uh, you can immediately uh, in the first semester you can defend your proposal but of course there are procedures to that first of all you need to nominate your supervisor and then you have to discuss with your supervisor you have to write your proposal okay? so if you are taking a research methodology in the first semester normally this is what i suggest my students i would suggest them to start working on the research proposal in the first semester so by the end of the first semester you are you can you can um you can uh, defend your proposal yeah? so you're good if you're able to uh, defend your proposal yeah so for phd uh, phd uh, if you are enrolling for mixed mode uh, you can defend your proposal uh, up to uh, semester three yeah up to semester three uh, because remaining is three semester for you to do your research yeah Okay. And for research alone, you can start, uh, you know, preparing your proposal and defending it in the first semester. Okay, so don't don't trouble yourself with the part time because you will not uh, be able to enroll for this part time mode. Yeah, this is only meant for the uh, local student. Okay. So uh, I would like also to introduce lah uh, the. Mm, research base uh, entity under the kulia this is the kulia's initiative to structure and to encourage uh, every academics or even students to be able to relate with the relevant uh, research cluster or research uh, base center at the kulia yeah? say for example if you are interested in uh, pursuing your uh, you know, uh, postgraduate program in sociology. So you can, uh, you know, uh, get in touch with the lecturers involved in social issues and development units under sociology. So uh, most of the time, the academics or the lecturers uh, who yeah. affiliate themselves in this uh, center for excellence, they have research and they have research grants with them. Uh, they are competent researchers yeah so 
say for example you are unsure about what to write then you may want to talk to them to see what research they are writing they are doing or what kind of grants that they have now maybe they are also looking for research assistant so if you can join them as research assistant uh, you can learn the technique of research or uh, the, the best thing is that you your research can be fun yeah because they have uh, funding uh, they may want to recruit you as their research assistant and you can get allowance huh? yeah so um, policy and area studies research unit is under political science psychology services unit this is under psychology abu hamid abu sulaiman center this is with triple it actually yeah triple it is directly with the kulia in fact triple it uh, international institute of islamic thought has funded many of the academics research uh, and also textbooks yeah now uh, recently they have issued a book review research for book review if i'm not mistaken so the lecturers are given funding and uh, most of the lecturers will recruit research assistant using this funding to help them in doing the research and we have also nursery research and training center this is under Sudan and comparative religion they also come with funding but uh, the requirement is that you have to do research on tadi on zaman sa'id nursi yeah on his tafsir yeah uh, and then we have center for Fam center for family affairs and industry chair for wakaf and humanitarian used to be under fiqh and usulul fiqh and yeah, dr um uh, except that i think uh, for center for family affairs the coordinator uh, is has retired, Dr. Maywood has retired. So I'm not very sure uh, uh, who is in charge of this uh, center after she left. Yeah? And then raising dual language children, this is with uh, language, uh, sorry, Dell, Department of English Language. Uh, most of the research um, uh, focus on um, empowering children um, with English language. So this is something that I think everybody can uh, get involved yeah? because most of the time they will go to, um, you know, um, uh, what you call that, uh, the, uh, um, how do you call it? Eh? You go to the area where you, uh, you know, the public, the, 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 the rural area, you train the children in the rural area to, uh, acquire some skills in English language. Yeah. Uh, so this is, um, uh, you know, what you call it, uh, empirical or field work uh, activities. And then future studies. Um, uh, this is uh, very philosophical. It's a new area in the discipline where you try to think about, uh, you know, try to anticipate and focus what are the challenges of the future and how do we plan ourselves, strategize ourselves in uh, trying to, uh, you know, face the, uh, the future. They call it, uh, there is a specific term, volatile future, uncertainties of the future, yeah? because um, they believe that our future is very uncertain, so we have to be able to anticipate what will happen in future and make ourselves ready. Yeah? Okay. And then we have also graduate research units. We have women progress research unit. Yeah, we have electoral research unit, computer assisted of learning language research unit, contemporary fic research unit, and uh, last is uh, but not least international social conflict mediation. This is under myself. Yeah. I am now doing research on mediation, not meditation, yeah, uh, Sister Aisha mediation <laughs> what is mediation mediation is third party uh, that um, um, that practice um, uh, mediation skill uh, to resolve disputations or social conflicts yeah all right so well in our kulia we have you know uh, varieties of niche uh, or area of research, you can name it. Say, for example, if you're from FIC and Usulul FIC and you want to study sociology, you can do it. Say, for example, you want to study about um, uh, deviant teaching and you want to know the society. So 
uh, we would suggest that you have someone from FIC, FIC as your supervisor and someone from sociology to be your co-supervisor. Now, see, for example, you want to study about media, yeah, the uh, social media. Uh, so let's say you are in Usuluddin, but you want to study about media. So you want to know about the ethics uh, and the responsibilities of the consumer of social media. So you have the uh, someone from Usuluddin to be yours. Uh, or someone from communication to be your supervisor and someone from Usuluddin to be your co-supervisor. Depends. Uh, yeah, depends. Like in Usuluddin, we have comparative religion, right? So you may also have someone from history department or from sociology to be your co-supervisor because they are overlapping uh, area of specialization. You know, like for example, in sociology, they have sociology of religion, but in comparative religion, we have uh, religious studies, or uh, we have also study of religion. So, uh, and we study civilization, yeah, for example. So, we may have these two uh, area of uh, expertise combined to help you in your research. That's very interesting, right? Because you can learn from two lecturers two academics from different area of specialization. So you are able to, uh, you know, to, to master, uh, uh, master certain area in, in Usuluddin and certain area in sociology, for example. So you will be uh, nurtured as a competent researcher. That I can promise you lah, if you come to IIUM, we are going to do whatever it takes to help you to be a good researcher. All right. So, of course, what makes your research special in comparison to if you go to, say, for example, to the UK, to the uh, American University, what is so special about doing your research in IIUM? Yeah, because we have this Islamization, integration and relevantization. I bet that you would not have this in other universities or maybe they do it, but not uh, as robust and as ambitious and as determined as Ahaski IRTHS because this has been uh, in the Kulia since the very beginning of her establishment. Now also we are talking about action research and impactful research yeah? because the current director Tan Sri Dr. Zulkifli uh, has, you know, uh, introduced the idea of sustainable development goal. Yeah? Uh, he encouraged us to do research that involve the community. Yeah? Uh, he aspired us to do research that bring changes to the community. Yeah? So this is what we call as impactful research. So for example, my research on mediation. Yeah? So how do I uh, do my research on mediation and giving an impact to the community uh, in the sense that, for example, I educate the community about uh, the techniques of resolving social conflicts, social disputes. Yeah? Uh, so uh, my research is to train them on, on how to resolve conflicts at the level of the community. And you know, this of course bring good changes in the community because it helps to mitigate or reduce conflicts in the community. Uh, so that, you know, uh, very briefly lah, what I can, uh, you know, uh, explain to you about. Uh, changes and giving impact to the community. Uh, the, I will not explain so much on this one. If you want to know more about this one, come to IIUM. <laughs> we can have a roundtable discussion on customization, integration, and relevantization. But enough to tease you or to give you some interest, you can go to IIUM website and look for the document we call it uh, the policies uh, of Islamization, and you will find what are uh, included in this agenda of Islamization, integration, and relevantization. So these are prepared by uh, the Center for Islamization uh, uh, Centuries, uh, Center for Islamizations. Uh, and I believe that 
uh, Tan Sri Professor Dr. Kamal Hassan is very instrumental in developing these policies of Islamization. So you can go to these policies of Islamization, IIM, you can get the whole lots about what this Islamization is all about. Yeah? And hopefully you can be inspired. All right, uh, what we have in, uh, in AHAS KRPHS in terms of uh, research skill, uh, we have um, you know, so much um, uh, research skill to offer you. Yeah, we just hope that when we organize, you come <laughs> and you join our research skill. No, I would like to see this. If you come to our Kulia and you do not take the opportunity to learn all these research techniques, it's, it's very unfortunate. It's, it's, the, it's very unfortunate because most of the time when we organize uh, research skill, it is very cheap. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes we offer it for free. Yeah. So we, for example, we teach you how to do literature review. Yeah. Uh, we teach you how to use Atlas EI. What is Atlas EI? Yeah? Doing qualitative research and using certain software to, uh, to collect the, uh, to compile your data and to analyze your data. And we have also colloquium annually where we invite postgraduate students to uh, come to participate in research poster competition where you introduce your research using posters. So you, when you do this, in the course of explaining your research with these posters, I tell you, you will be able to train yourself uh, in trying to understand what your research is all about. So you are training if you're doing your PhD, you're already training yourself for your viva. Yeah, you're trying to explain your research in a very simple words. Yeah, and then um, next year, we are going to organize a bootcamp program for postgraduate participants and many more lah, research tools program that we organize. In my experience organizing this, yeah, uh, very few students come. Maybe because you thought that research is a lonely journey. Yeah, that's very wrong understanding. Research is not a lonely journey. It's going to be very dry and dull if you do your research alone in your room. You have to be active, go to the seminars, go to the workshops, you have to present your research, you have to present paper, you have to publish your paper, then you, you find that your uh, research activities is fun, especially if you have good research skills. Yeah, So if you come to IIM, make sure make sure that you learn all these research techniques. Okay, so these are useful website, yeah, but I believe that, you know, having said all this, and let me see what I have else. Okay. Um, you must want, you may want to know, maybe, uh, what about the fees? Huh? Uh, let me show you the fees. <laughs> Is it too expensive to come to IIM? Uh, let me share with you the fees. Okay, this is. Are you interested to know the fees? <laughs> so this is. Oh, this is for PhD. Yes, of course. <laughs> okay, I, I, I will tell you something else. Inter also interesting. Yeah? Uh, this is for PhD. Yeah. Uh, PhD normally we have four to six courses, lah. Yeah. Um. So one course. Yeah. One cost um, will uh, cost work fee. I think per semester yeah, is no 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 no. One cost is um six hundred ringgit. Okay, six hundred ringgit. So if you take, but then uh, I think this is what you have to to pay lah, Actually, research fee per semester is six thousand. Yeah, six thousand. So if you enroll for four semesters uh, including some other fees lah. I think here they have recurrent fee every semester 300 and then health insurance yearly fee 400 entrance fee is for the first time when you apply okay? and you are accepted and then you are also uh, you have to pay evaluation fee 1000 so altogether the program is 38,400 yeah, 38,400, okay? Yeah, for PhD. Yeah, okay. Any subject? Okay, I think um, 
why is this 600? Let's say, let's say, <laughs> na'uzubillah mizalik, eh? let's say you fail one paper, right? And you have to replace that paper. So you have to pay one subject, 600 ringgit. In addition to this 6,000 fees. This then, yeah? Okay, this is for PhD. Okay, I think for masters are because many of you perhaps are, um, okay, um, let me show, oh my goodness, where is it? Okay, let me show you the master's fee. Okay, all right, for master's, okay, um, coursework only, for coursework only, yeah, uh, the fees is 4,500 ringgit per Per semester, yeah. Per semester, four thousand five hundred ringgit, yeah. Uh, for two years program, eighteen thousand, yeah. Ah, uh, this, this is a uh, recurrent fees. I think inclusive lah, three hundred ringgit. Ah, uh, but then there is additional fee which is one off lah, one time, one thousand lah, like uh, PhD just now. And then I think there is graduation fee, two hundred ringgit. Maybe this one you pay uh, towards the end of your study period. And then if you are enrolling for coursework and research, the same lah, 4,500. But then the fee is slightly higher, 20,250 ringgit yeah, for uh, master's. And for uh, master's coursework and research. Uh, but by res uh, for, cost, uh, for research alone, you pay 18,000 ringgit yeah for for semesters yeah <laughs> okay bismillah <laughs> i thought so that you will ask this hold on yeah okay let me see what i have in the slides again where's my slide just now okay now um let me see okay here okay scholarship yeah see if I can get this and then you can see. Oh, okay. Oh, lama. you cannot see it. I have to stop share. And then, let me see. Okay, here. Scholarship. Actually, there are many, lah, but of course, it's very competitive. Yeah? This Jamalullah scholarship is um funded by the uh, uh royalties in perlis so if you want to get this scholarship you have to do research that is related to perlis one of the state in malaysia <laughs> yeah either you do um, study on the uh, madrasah ke or university ke or whatever lah <laughs> Uh, something to do with Perlis because this is uh, this is uh, funded by the royalty in Perlis. Yeah? And then uh, for Mara here, yeah, this is for local students. And then we have also IIUM Khair Award. You can go to just type yeah, scholarship IIUM, you will, and then, uh, uh, or you go to Center for Postgraduate Studies. Yeah? Uh, IIUM, you get this, uh, what you call that, uh, web. Uh, page yeah. and then we have CPS Sejahtera Award. This is every semester it is open. Yeah, uh, we have also I I am in MTS scholarship. This is for uh, top scorer, uh, but don't worry. Yeah, uh, I mean you score and then you can you are entitled to apply for hadiah latihan persatuan. This is for local student and then beasiswa in the Pertuan Agong also for local student. Uh, Ministry of Higher Education uh, does have a scholarship for international students, but um, I'm not so sure when they open it. You really need to, or what you call it, you need to browse uh, Ministry of Higher Education Malaysia. And Khazana Watan, this is for local student. Khazana Lesari, also for local student. And Islamic Development Bank, so this is for international student. So uh, there are many, lah, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Alhamdulillah now CPS has uh, shared the uh, time frame when these uh, scholarships are offered. All right. And in addition to that, what I can tell you is that you can check if your 
supervisor or lecturers at the department um, has done uh, is doing research maybe you can work under their supervision okay but then there is something also that i need to tell you about coming to iium kan when you come to iium to do your postgraduate study <laughs> First of all, you have to take um, yeah, you have to take English and Arabic placement test. Yeah, if you are planning to write your thesis uh, in Arabic, so the requirement for English is slightly lower. I think maybe band for band three, if I'm not mistaken. But let's say you want to write your thesis in English, the um, the level or the requirement like required level is slightly higher. I think band five or band six, if I'm not mistaken. So you want to join Nusruddin kan and you want to write your thesis in English. So you have to score band five or band six. I'm not very sure. So what you do when you apply, as you apply to IIUM, go to cell pad, yeah, cell pad and check, check here. EPT, APT schedule. Uh, and this one is semester one to three hours. This already, already scheduled is there. So you will be able to know when the time they have this test. So you better be prepared. You better prepare yourself for this test. Why? Because if you do not achieve the relevant score, you will have to do English or Arabic at cell pad. So, of course, you have to pay fees. Huh? Right, and then that will extend your study period too. It will not be counted in your program study period, but you know, maybe you plan to do your master's in two years' time, but because you have to stay in SAPAT for one semester or two semesters, then you have to stay, uh, three, uh, you know, have, you have to add either one semester or two years more in your study period. Yeah, but I would say, like this, lah, I would say that. Uh, you have nothing to regret if you have to do English or Arabic. I believe you don't have problem with your Arabic. Yeah? But if you have to stay at SAPAD, learning English, um, you will not regret because this will help you a lot in your research. Yeah? Because we want you to be uh, prepared before you can come to the Kulia. All right? And then this is a Kulia website. Well, actually, to tell you frankly, whatever you want to know about the kulia, yeah, about the kulia, you can check on the website. Let me stop sharing this one and share again. Here, I should share. Yes. Uh, okay, so this is a uh, Husky IRTHS. Yeah, you want to know about our programs? Okay, you see departments. You can check the departments, lah. Uh, yeah. Check the departments here, for example, Usuluddin and Compare. Sorry, Dr. Muntaha, I am promoting Usuluddin Comparative Gen. So, you know, these are all the stuff at the department. You want to say, for example, Brother Hamza, you are interested to do, you do not know who to, I mean, you do not know uh, who is who in certain uh, expertise. You talk about uh, philosophy just now, can? So let me see if Dr. Megawati is here. Yeah. So you can, but you just browse the lecturers lah kan. Uh, does not work pula dah. Yeah. So um, let's see. Maybe the internet is not. Okay. So you know, uh, you can see. Okay, Dr. Megawati, what is her area of research here? Yeah. So you can see that, okay, what her articles. You can see what articles that he, she has written. You know, um. Uh, her area of expertise by looking into her, uh, say for example, articles, publication and uh, conferences, you can see book, you know, uh, monograph. So, you know, okay, this person is doing something in this area of study. So, do a good study lah at the program that you want to join before you come to, to the Korea. Is that okay? Yeah. So, and then uh, for the for the flow chart, because I would say that we are quite um we uh so we are quite uh, comprehensive uh, in terms of our 
uh, documentation. You go to deputy dean, postgraduate responsible research. Yeah? You have all the information guidelines. Yeah, uh, then you have, and then uh, the flowchart, SOP, examination of thesis, and everything is here. Okay. So these are useful websites that I would like to educate you about about uh, what you need to know if you come to the university. You know, given that you are new to the university, you may want to know many things. You can you have also to know the policies and procedures. So go to this link. You know what are required from you. you have to register every semester. Um, you have to submit progress report. So you cannot say that. Oh, I don't know. I don't know this because as a graduate student, now remember graduate student is an independent learning. Your supervisor will not be able to remind you, uh, don't forget to register this semester. Don't forget to submit research progress report. We will not be able to do that because you're all major student. So you will have to know the procedures every semester. And then library, okay. Uh, do you want to see our library? I hope you can do on your own because I want to, you know, spare the time for you to for Q and A. Okay? So I've given you this link. You can go uh, by yourself. And then uh, it's something that make our Kula very proud, lah. And eh? Dr. Muntaha is one of the editor. Eh? Um, we have how many? Eleven journals. Mashallah. Eleven journals. Some of them, yeah. Some of the you know you have to pay. <laughs> some of the journals are still free of charge. Eh? So for example. Asiatic is Corpus. This is from uh, Department of English Language. Yeah? Uh, this one is a paid journal. You have to pay. And then we have Journal of Religion and Civilizational Studies. This is, I think, in History Department. I think this is, uh, you have to pay, but I'm not so sure how much. I think very, very little, lah, maybe 250 or 300. And then I am, I, I am Journal on, of Human Sciences. This is still free. Journal of Linguistic and Literary Studies, Arabic Department. I think this is also free. Journal of Islam in Asia. This is uh, ERA, ERA uh, journal. This is um, index, uh, internationally indexed. And this is, I think, 500 ringgit uh, for one publication. And then Journal of Fake and also Fake. This one is still free, I think. Dr. Muntaha <laughs> from your department. Free, eh? No longer free, no. <laughs> No longer free. Oh my God! No. How much is how much is the publication? Maybe three hundred, maybe three hundred ringgit. Oh, very yes. cheap. <laughs> and then we have Al Burhan Journal of Quran and Sunnah Studies. This is also free. Al Itqan Journal of Islamic uh, Sciences. Uh, comparative religion, comparative studies. This is uh, from Suludin. This is still free of charge. Uh, Rizal, I think you have to pay. I'm not so sure how much. At-Tajdi, this is Arabic, Arisala, it's Arabic and English, At-Tajdi, Arabic journals, and intellectual discourse is Corpus Journal. So Corpus Journal, this is uh, expensive, lah, 1,500. <laughs> yeah? But this is, if you can publish in these journals, mashallah. Yeah? Okay, and then publication requirement. Yeah? If you are doing your research, uh, uh, your master's uh, by research mode, you have to publish. Uh, this is a um, requirement to graduate. If you do not publish, you cannot graduate. Uh, yeah? Remember, Master's by Research, you have to publish one minimum PE publication equivalent is 0 0.6. So it means that either you publish in non-index journal, uh, the point is 0 0.7 or index conference proceeding. Yeah? If let's say you publish or you join poster and index conference proceeding 0 0.3 not enough so you have to have another publication yeah but if you publish in uh, index journal regardless whether it is era corpus web of science or my site my site you will get one point for phd by coursework you have to publish one yeah but if you are doing phd by research you have to publish two yeah, so doesn't matter lah. Uh, most importantly, if you get two point, uh, you your you are safe. Eh? But let's say can uh, you 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 enroll for research, 
you have to publish two kan. But then you publish in index conference proceeding. Two, index conference proceeding 0.6. So 0.6 plus 0.6, 1.2. Not enough. Huh? You have to still publish another one. Or or if you still publish index conference proceeding, 0.6 uh, times three, 1.8, still not enough. You have to publish one more. Because uh, the important is to have two points. All right. Okay. So that's it. <laughs> I'm speeding now. Thank you so much. And I wish you all the best. Yeah. Inshallah. Uh, Arakum. Uh, Til jami'ah. Inshallah. When you. That's it. If you come to IIUM. Uh, acknowledge yourself. Come to see me. And acknowledge yourself. And if you have any problems. Uh, please do not hesitate to write to me. Inshallah. I will try to assist you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So uh, that's it. Thank you so much to Honorable Dr. Haslina for such an informative presentation. This all finally built up our courage and interest, of course, to pursue our study further, especially to IIUM, and make it one of our top options after I graduate from our bachelor degree, inshallah. So uh, before going to the next agenda, I'd like to sum up. Uh, first of all, I'd like to ask for permission from Dr. Haslina first to sum up some general information from the presentation. So uh, IIUM, as known, have, has 11 departments, which are uh, different, of course, and uh, the, the most interesting thing that I got from the presentation is that the intention of the IIUM to combine both Islamic heritage and uh, the challenges or uh, the things that we are facing right now in the modern era of course, which is of course will be so much different from what we had like for centuries ago. So um, IIUM has the intention to combine both sides from the Islamic ancient heritage and the globalization era and all the issues that it has. And IIUM offers students to study the Islamic heritage by the new point of view, based on the, the challenges of course that we are facing right now, such as moderni modernization and globalization and stuff. Uh, so uh, not only postgraduate and uh, the Undergraduate, IIUM also offers the PhD, which is uh, inshallah after the postgraduate. Uh, and there are two mass courses that we have to take in IIUM. And then there are some, uh, some informations uh, which is really important, which is uh, all the information about the departments, the things as like, um, uh, like research that we have to do. And uh, thank you so much to Dr. Haslina to remind us that we are now as an independent student that we cannot depend again to our supervisor, our teachers, because we are all, uh, I believe most of us right now here are 20 years old or up to 20 years old, which means that we are all already uh, grown up. <laughs> that it means that uh, willy nilly that we have to be such an in independent person that we, if we want to achieve things that we have to give a big effort on it. We cannot depend again on our parents, for example, or our friends or our teachers and stuff. So thank you so much <laughs> to remind us. Uh, it is such a reminder to all of us. And uh, the thing that is very interesting also from the IIUM is that IIUM give us uh, a, such, a, such an interesting thing that IIUM will help us for whatever it takes to make us such a fine researcher. This is uh, really calming, so uh, thank you. Because most of us, of course, wanted to be a researcher because uh, nowadays, uh, looking at uh, the issues and all things that we are facing right now, of course, we do really need to research things and 
um, studying again about all the Islamic heritage because uh, we know that the time is running and uh, everything is changing really fast. And so that we know that we need some changes in life. For example, like um, some information from the Islamic, Islamic heritage or the Turas, for example, that we study now in Al-Azhar are mistakenly understood by some people in this modern era. So that's why best on that, we do really need to do some researches to, um, to give a new explanation, a new point of view of uh, the Islamic heritage that has been mistakenly understood. So um, that's all I think I can sum up from the presentation. I, uh, I do apologize for any mistakes or any points that I missed. And inshallah, coming to our next agenda, which is um, the question session, which we divided into two parts, inshallah. The first is that the question which has been collected and selected from the participants. And the next part is uh, the question session, which will be live and virtual, uh, which uh, we will invite all the participants to ask the questions from themselves lively uh, or directly. So the first question coming from Ms. Zahra Hasna Nafila, uh, which is what major should we take at IIUM after graduating as an Islamic Sharia scholar? Uh, I beg your pardon um, for to Honorable Dr. Haslina. I would like to ask a question. Would you prefer the question sessions like a question and answer or all the questions uh, delivered at once and then you're gonna answer all the questions at once? Yeah, better to compile the question and then I answer. Okay. Compile, yeah, compile the question. Yeah. And then okay. I answer it once. Mm. Okay. So um, the first question coming from Ms. Zahra Hasna Nafila. What major should we take at IIUM after graduating as an Islamic Sharia scholar? And the second question coming from Mr. Arya Abdul Fatah, which is, as a student, but also a grown up, can we continue our studies and have a job at the same time in Malaysia? And if yes, what jobs are suitable for students? So um, those are the two, uh, the two questions. We invite Dr. Haslina to answer the question and the time and virtual floor is yours. Thank you. All right, thank you very much uh, for the question. For the first question on the major, if you're from Sharia, of course, the fastest lane is to go to the Department of Fiqh Usulul Fiqh to do your master's or, P master's or PhD in Fiqh and Usulul Fiqh. Yeah? Uh, but let's say, let's say you're from Sharia background and you want to do in Quran Sunnah studies. What will happen? Um, as you apply, your paper will go to student admission committee. From the student admission committee, it will go to the relevant department, the department that you request for or you apply for. So your depart uh, the department of Quran and Sunnah studies will have a look at your transcript. Yeah, say you... You're from Sharia and then you want to do master's in Quran Sunnah studies. So the head of departments will look at your transcript. Um, now, maybe uh, in your uh, degree, the nomenclature is Sharia studies. Yeah? But then when the department look at your transcript, you have a good number of courses in, say, for example, Hadith studies, Quranic studies. So <clears throat> you can go straight away to the program. Uh, you need not to do prerequisites. But let's say you do not have enough component of the basics in Hadith study or Sunnah studies and Quranic studies. You know? So what will happen? The department will advise you to take prerequisites. Okay, What are prerequisites? Prerequisite courses, if you are from master's program, you have to take some of the courses from undergraduate program. Basic courses on Sunnah studies, on Quranic studies. 
yeah um i think now the most you uh, you have to take uh, up to four courses undergraduate courses this is to equip you to help to prepare you for your master program yeah because your first degree is bachelor in sharia but then you have masters in quran sunnah so you need to have the basic foundation in quran in uh, quranic and sunnah studies yeah uh, so you have to take prerequisites you can take the prerequisite courses together with your master's courses but then um for the undergraduate courses to the um, passing mark is high <laughs> You have to score 70 out of 100. Uh, then only you pass. If you score less than 70, you fail. You have to redo. You have to, to retake the course. So it's quite challenging. But inshallah, you will learn a lot. Yeah? Okay, so that's about uh, majoring. Now. Let's see if you're from Sharia and you want to do sociology. Yeah, It will impose on you. No, because you see Sharia and sociology has no link altogether, right? So perhaps you have to take more prerequisite courses. I've heard that some students have to take up to eight prerequisite courses. <laughs> Especially if you're going for human sciences studies, you do not have the degree, right? Uh, so you have to take eight or up to 10. Of course, you study longer, lah, yeah? longer period. Yeah, but that is not counted within your uh, postgraduate study period, so don't worry. Yeah, but then it means you have to pay more, isn't it? Uh, because one course you have to pay 600 ringgit. So if you take eight courses times uh, 600 times eight courses, yeah, and then uh, okay, well, um, in principle. Your visa is student visa, isn't it? So you cannot work. In principle, you cannot work. But you, if you do your, if you work, it is at your own risk. Just make sure that you don't get caught <laughs> by the police. Yeah, you, know, you work at the station, uh, petrol pump, or you work at the restaurant. Can uh, be careful. Yeah, I won't suggest that you work. Uh, on that nature maybe if you want to work you can work like uh, tuition yeah offering tuition arabic tuition for example or quranic uh, tuition yeah uh, things like that nah? yeah so which is not very obvious lah, that you are working yeah don't expose yourself research lah, assistant yeah? is fairly, bro research huh? assistant Research assistant. Uh, research assistant again. I'm coming to this. Yeah. Uh, and then you mm -hmm. can work as research assistant. Uh, that is not a problem. Or if you're competent enough, you can work as tutor at the university. Especially for PhD student, you can be uh, you can teach undergraduate program. If you're a PhD student and you're competent, you can teach undergraduate student. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, introductionary subject. We do have that for uh, you know, PhD student. So that one you you can you can uh, you, you can work yeah uh, or part time uh, in the university you can do that from time to time. We do offer part time uh, on part time basis. I think the pay is not that much six ringgit per hour if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, six ringgit per hour. You can work up to forty hours per month. So six times forty is like two hundred forty lah. Not much lah. Yeah? but well, at least it's something kan. But don't worry, Doctor Mantaha. In our university, we have, alhamdulillah. I think we, if you, I mean, in terms of the your meal kan, we have um, what do you call it? Uh, we have free meal uh, services and sometimes we have coupon for student. In the past, we do practice that some student uh, buy certain coupon and give it for free uh, for other students to enjoy the meal for free. You know, so uh, I think in terms of your meal, you need not to worry, but then you have to come forward uh, and tell us if you have difficulties. At our kuliah, we have COVID fund. 
<laughs> Alhamdulillah, the COVID come with rahmah too because we managed to activate a uh, funding for students who are facing, you know, uh, you know, uh, monetary problems, you know, in terms of their meal every day lah. Eh? Not to pay for your uh, school fee, but for your day-to-day needs. Yeah. Uh, so you can uh, come to me and you know tell your problems, and then we can uh, you know advise the Kulia Trust Fund to share uh, to reimburse certain amount of money for your meal. Yeah. And we have also endowment fund at the university. The lecturers, the administrative staff, we are um, contributing certain amount to the endowment fund and student can get also assistance lah, uh, in terms of their daily uh, needs. Yeah. You can go to the endowment fund and apply for zakat. Yeah. Uh, okay, so apa tadi ya? Eh? Uh, in terms of the job, uh, itulah ya. Yeah. I know that some students, I you know, be the tuition teacher, Quran teachers, ya. Yeah. And part time at the mahala, ya. Yeah. Part time at the offices during break. Uh, itulah the problem is whenever there is uh, semester break, uh, you people because Indonesia is very nearby kan, and there is a Asia, the ticket is very cheap, so you don't stay on campus, you go home. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's why yeah, some students face problem because they go home very often or very regular. Um, I, I would suggest that in two years time, why not stay on campus and benefit all the resources that we have on campus, work during the semester break as part time at the administrative office or at the mahala. So you can cover some of the expenses. Lah. All right. So that's it. Thank you. Maybe Dr. Montaha also know uh, how to, you know, to help the students uh, with regard to their uh, monetary uh, issues. Okay, that's about it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Any more so questions? That's it. Uh, thank you so much, the Honorable Dr. Haslina, for the answers. So, uh, in general, that we as students do not have to be worried about the financial issues. <laughs> Because the campus will help us and give us some advices if we have or we are facing some problems with the financial issue, issues. So uh, coming to the next part of this session, which is the question and answer in life, we are welcoming to all the participants who are having any questions. Uh, which is needed to be asked, of course, please uh, raise your hand and open the microphone and please deliver the question. But before that, I do uh, remind and inform to all the participants to please fill out the satisfaction survey on the chat box as the requirement to get the, the participation certificate. Once more, I do inform to all the participants to fill out the satisfaction survey, which is sent on the chat box as the requirement to get the participation certi certificate. Thank you. So now, uh, any participant having any questions, please open the camera, raise your hand, and open the microphone and deliver the question. Thank you. <laughs> okay, any question from the participants? We are welcome to question. Uh, if there are no questions, then I will give a question. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, please, Brother Hamza, carry on. Uh, associate associate uh, Professor Haslina Ibrahim. Uh, my name is Hamza. And uh, my question is, uh, can you uh, please to provide a PPT or PowerPoint of the pres presentation that you gave before to our to us as participants in this group uh, and i want to know so far what is the difference between a uh, professor and uh, association professor thank you <laughs> all right thank you brother hamza for the two questions uh, inshallah i will share the powerpoint to brother muhammad al fatih yeah, the corresponding um, person uh, have contacted me, inshallah. Yeah, I will email him immediately after this program. Okay, so what about this professor, associate professor, and in IAUM, we have also assistant professor. Okay. Um, well, actually, after your, you have completed your PhD, yeah, you will get the title doctor. Yeah, doctor. But in IIUM, say for example, you apply for a post in IIUM. Um, if you are fresh, fresh graduate of PhD, your job designation is assistant professor. Yeah, assistant professor. This is normally for newly uh, a PhD graduate. Yeah, so. When you join the institution as academic staff, you do research, you publish, you do some administrative job, like by myself, kan? I'm the deputy dean, kan? so I'm serving the university as lecturer and also as administrative. Kan? I'm doing administration. So, and then you do research, you get certain funding, kan? Uh, you can apply for promotion. Yeah, so you apply for promotion from assistant professor to associate professor. In Bahasa Melayu, it is Professor Madia. I think Dr. Uh, Dr. Muntaha will explain to you what is Professor Madia in Indonesia. So, associate professor is half professor, not yet professor. That's why I say Hamza, don't call me professor. I'm not a professor yet. Yeah, I'm half professor. So. Uh, you will get associate professor if you have shown some uh, development in terms of your research, consultancy, yeah, your, your, your visibility as, uh, as uh, an academic staff. Yeah? And then, say for example, you have, like myself now, I'm an associate professor. I wish, you know, after some time, I think that I have enough publications, I have experience in research, I have good experience in administration, I apply for professor. Uh, so, if the assessors, um, normally when we apply, our application will go for external assessors. Of course, senior professor lah, will look at our document document and we have also interview yeah they interview us and if they think that we are qualified we will be granted professors yeah so while serving the university i can carry the title of associate professor and professor if i am granted that title but let's say now i am associate professor i retire yeah, I retire from the university and then I go to another university. So I will not carry the title associate professor at other university. I'll be a doctor because this title doctor is with you. It's your achievement, lifetime achievement. But the associate and professorship is the conferment by the university. Unless if I go to that particular university and then the university confirm me associate, so I will have 
I will get the title associate professor from that university. So let's say I have professorship and then I retire. I don't go to any of the universities. I just stay at home and relaxing. <laughs> I do nothing. I cannot use the title professor because I'm no longer serving the university. I can only use the title doctor. Yeah. Uh, all right. So you see that the Muntaha is explaining what the title is in Arabic. All right. So it's a career development, lah, Brother Hamza. Yeah, because when you be, be a doctor, that's not the end of your journey. Okay, let me remind you as a researcher. Um your PhD is not the end of your journey, it's just the beginning. And that's why you want to nurture you to be a good researcher because right after your PhD, you are required as academics, you have the responsibilities to pursue your research. And when you do your research, you can apply for promotion. That is your career development. All right. So inshallah, I pray that all of you who are interested to join postgraduate study, interested to be academics, inshallah, you will be great uh, doctor, great associate professors, and great professor, professors, inshallah. I hope that explains it, yeah, Brother Hamza. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much okay. for uh, Dr. Haslina for the answer and Brother Hamza for the question. So I think uh, Dr. Haslina and Dr. Mentaha, we are actually facing uh, language barriers right now because we, all the participants actually have uh, some questions which we have actually collected and selected and some of them have been answered. Uh, the last two questions that I delivered, those are from the participants, but most of them are in Bahasa Indonesia. And uh, if Dr. Mentaha and Dr. Haslina uh, uh, permit us, permit all the participants to deliver the question in Bahasa. Inshallah, the committee will translate it uh, into English. So, um, untuk segenap uh, partisipan, nggak apa-apa pertanyaannya diajukan dengan Bahasa Indonesia. Nanti Insyaallah panitia akan terjemahkan. And uh, there is... Saya yeah. boleh faham bahasa Indonesia. <laughs> Insyaallah. So uh, we uh, we already accepted uh, one question from uh, the name is Nana Peserta. So the question is in IIUM, uh, it is informed that the GPE, the minimum or standard GPE for the acceptance is two point seventy five. While all of us here in Al Azhar University, we have uh, a different um, a different name for the for the GPE. We we have like a Jayat Jidan, for example, and then we have the predicate like Mumtaz and stuff. So how do we uh, relate both of uh, the different names? Thank you. All right. So we can accept up to Jayat. Dr. Muntaha, am I correct, Dr. Muntaha? Makbul? Yes, yes. Makbul is not Makbul, bro. Makbul is not Makbul. Makbul is not Makbul. Makbul is not Makbul. Makbul is not Makbul. Okay, up to Jayit. Eh? Up to Jayit. So, uh, at least Jayit. At least Jayit. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. That uh, is really informing because sometimes we, as Al Azhar students, are a bit confused when mm -hmm. we wanted to we want we want to pursue our next study because the GPE the GPE name is different. Yeah. So it's a bit hard to relate. So uh, thank you so much for the information. So um, I'd like to inform once more to all the participants to please fill out the satisfaction survey, which is uh, sent in the chat box as the requirement for getting the participation certificate. Thank you. Dan untuk para peserta yang punya pertanyaan dalam bahasa Indonesia, nggak apa-apa. Ahlan, silakan ditanyakan. Insya Allah akan dibantu untuk diterjemahkan oleh panitia. So, um, we already accepted uh, another question. Um, for 
the graduate or for the Sharia economic scholar, is it suitable to pursue their further study in the IIUM as uh, the same major for taking the same major, which is the Sharia economy? Thank you. Yeah, definitely, yes. Boleh, no problem. We have also Kuliah of Economic and Management Sciences. Uh, but I believe in Kuliah of Economic Management Sciences, you, I, I'm not so sure what component of courses that you have in Al-Azhar for economics. Uh, maybe you have calculation too, but I believe in in economics, you have basic courses like business math, yeah? statistic. So I'm not so sure whether Al-Azhar offers this. So if you apply for Kuliah of Economic and Management Sciences, uh, you may have to take those courses as prerequisites. I'm not very sure. You have to check with the uh, website. Tapi, uh, uh, for FIC and also FIC, how is it? We have, Dr. Munta, we have a good number of lecturers who are serving. Yes. Uh, banking. Uh, Dr. Munta, yeah. can yeah, please, Dr. Munta. Uh, di FIC and Sulfik, kami mm -hmm. juga menerima apa namanya kajian-kajian uh, ekonomi. Jadi banyak sekali konsultan bank daripada apa dari uh, graduan fik usul fik. But for theory for manager bank manager it should be from uh, economic department. Okay. All right. So you can there are many choice here. Yes, Prof. No. We have also IIBF kan? Uh, yes. We have uh, economics, IIBF mm -hmm. for finance. Finance and banking, and I also in fik usul fik. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, you have three choice. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Just yes, uh, when you back to Indonesia, just transit here to Malaysia, <laughs> <laughs> and then back to your country. Mm. Okay, thank you so much for the answer. That uh, it means that we have a very uh, many variety of uh, the. Yeah, the choice is that um, we don't have to be worried about the major, right? Because we know that IIUM is uh, one of the university which tries to combine both Islamic heritage once again and the issue, the modern issues right now. So if it's uh, just the all the Sharia uh, relating to Sharia economics, once again, it's going to be so relatable and there are many options for that. So, um, pertanyaan selanjutnya, nggak apa-apa, dikirimkan lewat chat box lagi untuk teman-teman yang punya pertanyaan. Dr. Muntaha, uh, what yes, about halal studies and Dr. Muntaha, is there anyone who can supervise this is on, because now you have bachelor in halal management, kan? So, oh, yes, fokus graduate, macam mana Dr. Muntaha? Fokus graduate? Uh, until now, still an undergraduate, Prof. Halal. Oh, okay. Uh. So, we have a new program. We have uh -huh. a new program related to bachelor in halal industry, but until uh -huh. now still undergraduate, and also they have postgraduate. But uh, uh -huh. I, will, I will give you information, the information, and send to you uh, to the chat, insyaallah. Ah, uh -huh. so ini pun satu area baru juga kan? Kalau pelajar pelajar tu nak buat thesis dalam halal management. Mungkin uh, ada lecturer daripada FIC Usul FIC yang boleh supervise dan kita ada co-supervisor daripada INHAD. Is that possible, uh, Dr. Muntaha? Uh, I'm not sure, bro. I will check first. Mm. Because some lectures from FIC Usul FIC uh, uh, teach in INHAD program. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I will yep. check the information here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think in terms of the audit, uh, from what I know, uh, in heart offer elective courses untuk postgraduate. So uh, students who want to take elective courses for postgraduate, they can enroll the courses offered by in heart. Yeah. In fact, in IIUM, can if let's say uh, you want to study some other courses from different uh, from other kuliahs, you can. Uh, but then you have to go to that particular kuliah and see what are the elective courses for postgraduate. Of course, you have to pay lah kan. But you, you, are, you can actually learn more from other kuliahs. Um, this one, so I, I send the, the link for Inhat, mm -hmm. Master Inhat. 
Hmm, okay. So this is within heart lah kan, not with our ahas ke IRKHS kan, Prof? Uh, it's from in heart, Prof. From in heart. Hmm. Alright. In Indonesia kan, what about this uh, area? Is it still new? Macam halal management? Yes, still new. Malaysia is more uh, developed than Indonesia. Uh, is that prospect? Because the regulation, I mean, because the regulation from the government, Malaysia is uh, from long ago. Tapi, do you think if the students uh, do masters in uh, halal study ni, dia ada prospect tak ada kat sana? In terms of dia punya prospect, uh, kerja ke, specialization ke di Indonesia? I'm not sure, bro. Uh, maybe uh, because Indonesia, uh, rather the market, this big market, uh-uh, I need it. Betul, betul, betul. Cuma dia punya halal industri tu tak macam di Malaysia lah kan? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Tapi sebenarnya market dia very big kan? Eh? Market dia very big, insyaAllah. Okay, uh, I think that we have one participant raising her hand. For Wahyuni Mutmaina, we invite you to open the camera and please deliver the question. Thank you. Silakan Mutmaina irja'i ila rabbiki radiyatam marudiyya. Sister Wahyun, uh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, can you show us the picture of the facilities of the university just like, uh, as like dorm or swimming pool maybe? Yeah. Okay, memanglah. Well, we do have that. Cuma, let me see. Um, in terms of the facility too, I think... Alhamdulillah, IUM is quite uh, good lah. Cuma, let me see if I can show you the mahal lah. Eh? <laughs> mahal yes, you have female uh, spot bro. Ah. Okay, female mahal lah. Hmm. So, nak, nak cari gambar ni, Dr. Muntaha. Eh? Yes. Nak cari gambar mahal lah. Let me see, mahal lah Mariam. Okay, I was once the principal of Mahala Mariam. Okay, let me share this with you. So Mahala ni Alhamdulillah lah in terms of the, um, what do you call that? In terms of the dorms for postgraduate kan, very comfortable lah. And the view, Masya Allah, Jamila tu jidan. <laughs> Cuma Mahala tu kadang-kadang uh, Worn out sikit because of the pain uh, Because of the pain uh, So oh. dia ni Ni some examples je lah kan uh, I can Let me see if they are What else? Eh? <laughs> Sister Wahyu ni uh, Some uh, place in a female Complex spot is closed Because uh, uh, It's special for, for women For example uh-huh. swimming, yeah. swimming pool is not It's in the building Inside yeah. the building. Uh, we so have USA. For, yes, we have swimming pool for sisters. Uh, this is swimming pool for sisters? Uh, this, this is swimming pool for sisters. So, so kita I, I think think is, uh, this, IUM this is, is international for, standard. For woman. Yes, yeah, for women. women only? Oh. Yes. Yep. For women, for women only. only. Oh, I come to us and do your sport. Yeah. <laughs> For brothers pun ada, for female pun Jawa. ada. We have, um, we have uh, apa dia panggil, uh, track, uh, jogging track. Yeah. So, tapi, uh, itulah kalau yang Jawa, center, so many yeah. yeah, many, many facilities. Uh, I go to the children's swimming pool, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> they have also children's <laughs> swimming pool in the uh, female sports <laughs> complex. So I go to the children's swimming pool because it's slightly shallow. Yang ni memang dalam. I think up to it's Olympic punya level. 2.2 ke 2.3 something like that. 
Uh, tapi dia macam like 1 meter, 1.2 meter, 1.4, 1.7 up to 2.0 macam tu lah. Ya? Yeah? Hmm. So asrama tu don't worry very comfortable lah. Ya yeah, for PG post graduate um we it's like uh, 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 apa tu uh, you have four rooms in one big room. Uh, so you have like a common area where maksudnya when you come to the mahalla tu to your room you have um privacy lah. Uh, you are not you don't have like four beds all together kan sharing tapi in one big room you have four rooms and then you have common area. Some mahala like Rukaya, uh, they have a very uh, specialized room. You have air condition. You can bring your refrigerator, but of course you have to pay for rental to more higher lah. I think the rental fee, mm. I tak ingat lah, maybe 600 monthly. Uh, yang tu you can get air condition. Oh. Yeah, itu okay. yang very okay. good lah. Monthly eh, monthly. But yes. for uh, the normal room, I think, okay, remember eh, the fees too not including the um, the mahalah tau. Over here we call mahalah eh, the hostels. Oh. Um, the mahalah fees, one semester for normal room, if I'm not mistaken, 600 to 650 for one semester. One semester for is one like semester, three yeah. to four, uh, three, three to four months, 600 something. It's cheap lah, very cheap. And our campus ni is walking distance. Yeah, of course uh, it's quite far but you can still walk. Okay. I, 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 okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, thank you so much uh, to... Miss Wahyu Nimutmaina for the question and to Dr. Haslina Ibrahim for the answer. And now closer to the end, Alhamdulillah, we would like to say thank you so much to Dr. Haslina Ibrahim and Dr. Muntaha for having, a, for having the time with us today. And we do really, really thank you for the presentation and information. Uh, but before that, I would like to ask for permission to Dr. Haslina Ibrahim if you don't mind, we would like uh, we would like you to please uh, send us the PowerPoint of the presentation today to Mr. Al Fatih Al Mubarak's email. And um, thank you so much for all the participants participating with us today on this session. And now the next agenda is praying, which inshallah will be led by. Dr. Muntaha, which also will deliver the closing statement. To Honorable Dr. Muntaha, the virtual floor is yours. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ashukru jazil lil munadimin di hadhi nadwah. Ashukru jazil lil Ustaz Hamza, wal Ustaz Alisha, wal Ustaz Afatih. وكل الأساتير الموجودين هنا في هذه الجلسة شكرا جزيلا على اهتمامكم وحسن ضيافتكم وأيضا حسن ودمس دمسة خلقكم أولا أنا أفتخر كثيرا بوجودكم وأوصي أوصيكم بالجد والسهاد في الأزهر الشريف فهي جامعة عريقة وارجعوا إلى بلدكم بالعلم والخلق وخدمة المجتمع إن شاء الله وثالثا بيتي مفتوح لكم إذا نزلت ماليزيا تفضلوا بيتي بيتكم إن شاء الله الأخ محمد فاتح سكن في بيتي مدة من الزمن والحمد لله وأختم هذه الجلسة هذه الأستاذة حسنة إبراهيم على إلقائها القيم وأختم هذه الجلسة بدعاء كفالة المجلس مجلس وصورة العصر ونختم بدعاء سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيدا يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي وجهك الكريم وعادل سلطانك 
Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-khairal kullah wa na'udhu bika min al-sharri kullih. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-khairal kullah wa na'udhu bika min al-sharri kullih. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ilman nafi'a wa amalan salihan mutaqabbala wa rizqan wasi'an halalan tayyiban mubaraka. Allahumma ahfad ihwalana fil azari sharif. Allahumma ahfadhum min kuli su'an makruh. Allahumma ahfadhum min kuli su'an makruh. Allahumma ahfadhum min kuli su'an makruh. Allahumma yassir umurahum. Allahumma yassir umurahum. Allahumma barik lahum fi hayatihim. Allahumma barik lahum fi jurasatihim. Allahumma barik lahum fi jurasatihim. Allahumma ja'alu mubarakina ayna makanu. Allahumma yassir umurahum fi dunya wal akhirah. Allahumma yassir umurahum fi dunya wal akhirah. Allahumma as'idhum fi darain. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanah. Wa fi al-akhirati hasanah tawaqina azab al-nar. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana. Ani alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, dear Honorable Dr. Muntaha, for leading us uh, for the praying session. And now coming to the last agenda, which is the photo session, followed by handing over the certificates of appreciation. To all the participants, we do hope to all of you to activate the camera because we are going to have a shooting together. Untuk teman-teman uh, peserta dipersilahkan untuk membuka mengaktifkan kameranya sebentar untuk sesi foto bersama. Uh, we are going to count before the shooting. One, two, three. Once again, one, two, three. Okay, thank you so much for all the parties. I'm sorry, please open your microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do apologize for the mistake. So um, coming, to, coming to the end of the agenda, I, I am Ayul Shalvina as the moderator today. would like to express my deepest gratitude to Dr. Haslina Ibrahim as our speaker and to Dr. Muntaha. Who, uh, who has led us for the praying and to all the participants who has participated with us today. I do apologize for any mistakes happened and see you in the next occasion, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And for the next, I would like to hand over uh, the lead of this agenda to the master of ceremony, Ms. Sani Fadilah. The time and place are yours. Thank you. Okay, for Mr. Hamza, would you like to give a certification, a certificate to Dr. Haslina? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you so much for uh, Associate Professor Dr. Haslina Ibrahim and uh, Dr. Muntaha Artalim for giving us a wonderful and uh, a good and special presentation. And uh, before closing this agenda, uh, I represent uh, from Mr. President, 
uh, and uh, first I am not a Mr. President. <laughs> I am not Mr. President of Indonesian Student Association in Egypt. Uh, just now, uh, Associate Professor Haslina uh, calls me as Mr. President of PPMI, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not a Mr. President. I am uh, the first coordinating minister. Uh, or in Arabic language, uh, al wazir, al wazirul awal fi wizarati ta'lim. Okay, and uh, I will give. I'm going to give a certificate of appreciation. Firstly, for uh, wait a second. Share screen, okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, firstly, I will give this uh, certificate of appreciation to uh, Associate Professor Dr. Haslina Ibrahim as a speaker at international webinar with the following theme, Postgraduate Program in International Islam University, Malaysia. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman Kuleya of Islamic Refield Knowledge and Human Sciences, which was held on uh, 21st of November 2022 uh, today. And this certificate of appreciation is uh, proudly presented by us, the whole committee of webinar from Indonesian Student Association in Egypt. And this certificate presented to uh, Professor Dr. Haslina, uh, honorable. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you very much. You are welcome, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Haslina Ibrahim. And uh, secondly, I uh, honor honorably present this uh, certificate of appreciation uh, to Dr. Muntaha Artalim Zain as a representative of IIUM at international webinar uh, with the following theme, postgraduate web, uh, program in International Islamic University, Malaysia. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman Kuleya of Islamic Refield Knowledge and Human Sciences, which was held on today, exactly on uh, 21st of November, 2022. Uh, with me, uh, first coordinating minister Hamza Asad Abdul Jabbar Lisans, and chief of committee Muhammad Al Fatih Mubarak, and president of Indonesian Student Association in Egypt, Mr. Auzina Azmal Umur, LC. Thank you, Sir Hamza. Thank you very much. Uh, you are welcome, uh, Dr. Muntaha Artalim Zaim. And uh, I give uh, back this section to MC, moderator of ceremony, Mrs. Uh, Sani Fadila. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Haslina and Dr. Muntaha, for giving such informative, amazing explanation and interesting speech or presentation and to Aisha to moderate this excellent webinar, and to all of staff first department of Indonesian Student Association in Egypt, who had arranged this event, and also to all amazing participants, please give a class for us. Okay. I'd like to apologize if there are many mistakes from me as a master of ceremony during this webinar, well, I'm Sunny Fadila Nara Aisha. That's all for me. Have a great rest of your day. And until next time, we'll see you again in another webinar. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.